The brawl on Sunday in Anaheim between the Mariners and the Angels was one of the biggest brawls that I have seen in Major League Baseball in a long time. I mean, the the term brawl gets said a lot around Major League Baseball. Uh, benches clearing brawl, and then you watch, and it's a bunch of guys saying, hold me, at, hold me back, hold me back. And maybe there's like a push. Oh, no. This was... This was a big brawl. There were massive punches thrown. This was a lot. So let's let's break this down, and, and let me just kind of give you a summary because I'm sure you all heard about this brawl. If you didn't, I'll catch you up to date on all of it. This will be the Brawl 101 from Anaheim on Sunday. This all started on Saturday. Saturday this started, and late in the game in the ninth inning, Swanson, the pitcher for the Mariners, threw up and in, upper 90s on Mike Trout. He was the, he was up and he was up late in the game with the chance to bring them right back in this game. Now, actually, with a chance to tie the game, he gets thrown up and in at his head. They don't hit him, and then they end up intentionally walking him when the runner that was on first base goes to second base. So they end up walking him anyway, right after throwing at his head. Mike Trout was not pumped about this after the game. Pretty upset about it. Here's the tweet. Mike Trout was pretty upset about a pitch that buzzed by his helmet in the ninth inning. If you can't pitch inside, don't pitch inside. And if you're going to hit me, hit me in the ribs. Don't hit me in the head. So Trout says that Saturday night, then comes Sunday. Sunday, the Angels decided on a whim, on that day, to start Andrew Wance. They started an opener. They had, they had an opener go for that game. In the first inning of that game, Julio Rodriguez, second batter of the game, just four or five pitches into the game. Andrew Wance, the opener, throws at Julio Rodriguez's head, throws it behind him. The pitch goes behind him, the first pitch to him. Warnings were issued, but really not a big deal was made about that. Probably in that moment, I would have really made a big deal of it if I'm the umpires. Get the control, call out both managers, say, hey, whatever. We'll get to more of that in a second. Let me continue on here with what happened next. In the second inning, after this pitcher misses Julio Rodriguez but throws behind him, he hits Jesse Winker, first pitch to Jesse Winker, drills him. Jesse Winker, not pleased. This was the first pitch of the inning. Jesse Winker, not pleased. Everybody starts getting a little riled up. Jesse Winker looks over to the Angels dugout. Next thing you know, they're having words with him. He runs over there, and then it all broke loose. Haymakers were thrown from every direction. I mean, this got bad in a hurry. Anthony Rendon comes out of the dugout. Anthony Rendon is out for the year with his injury, with his thumb injury. He has a cast on his right arm. He was throwing punches, haymakers, at Jesse Winker with his left hand. This got wild, and it got wild in a hurry, and it all stems back to the Saturday night game when Mike Trout was hit. Now, look, I I, I don't have a, a big strong opinion here one way or the other other than a couple of things first and foremost never ever throw at people's heads in baseball there is absolutely no place for that the game of baseball has a funny way of policing itself it really does you don't need you don't need all this to to be quite honest with you, you don't even really need the suspensions. You don't need umpires coming out and doing all this and all that. The players are going to stick up for each other. Baseball has a funny way of all leveling out. The game polices itself. Mike Trout, the star, the best player in baseball, gets thrown at his head Saturday night. Whether it was intentional or not, this is important to say and to understand. Whether this was intentional or not doesn't really matter. The optics look bad. 
and this is the best player in baseball, if you can't throw inside, don't do it. Because you can't risk throwing up and in a guy's head. If you can't, if you can't prove that you can own the inside part of the plate, you, you just can't do it. There's going to be repercussions. And there were the next day. It's, it's just it's frustrating to see. I don't condone the violence by any means. I, I don't. But the game polices itself. The next day, they stick up for their teammate, Mike Trout. They try and hit Julio Rodriguez. They start an opener, for God's sakes. They, they, this was premeditated. We knew this was going to happen. They miss Julio Rodriguez. They hit Jesse Winker. Stay away from people's heads. Like I said, the game polices itself, but we can't be throwing up around people's heads. You can police yourself by hitting people in the ribs, by hitting people in the back. I promise you, I've been hit in professional baseball in the ribs by 101 miles an hour. I remember it like it was yesterday because not only did I get hit in the ribs with 101, my left shoulder shoulder that I have a torn labrum, my labrum popped out all in the same time. Got hit in the ribs with 101. My my shoulder popped out. I walked down to first base. It took me an hour to get there. It was a nightmare. But it hurts. Everything you need to do, it can happen in that moment. I wasn't the one that caused anything. I was just the one that had to bear the brunt of, of getting hit. It happens. Hit them in the ribs. Don't throw up around a head. Where, where you can give somebody a concussion, where, where you could kill somebody, if it sneaks in the perfect part of that helmet, right, you know, right where the brim and the side flap meet, if it sneaks in right there, it could hit somebody in the temple. And at 90, 100 miles an hour, I don't think it's a stretch to say that it could kill somebody. Stay away from people's heads. That stuff, there's no business for it in the game of baseball. The game polices itself. That's what we saw on Sunday between the Angels and the Mariners. Um, but, but stay away from heads. But that was it, it really was a bad, bad brawl. I haven't seen one like that in a long time. Uh, Rysel Iglesias, the, the closer for the Angels at one point, after all was seemingly settling down, grabbed the, the carton, the, the, the tray of seeds in the dugout, sprints out, and throws the entire tray of seeds at their dugout. It didn't even make it to the third baseline, but he just threw it in their direction. It was hysterical. Jesse Winker walking off the field. Decided to flip the old double bird to the crowd. I mean, just a remarkable, ridiculous brawl that happened on Sunday in Anaheim. Man, this actually all did kind of, I'll end with this because it's not the most, it's not the brightest, happiest story in the world, but it did have a happy ending. Jesse Winker, who got thrown out of the game, there was a little girl sitting in the stands that was bawling in tears because she wanted to see Jesse Winker play baseball. And in the second, Jesse Winker and Eugenio Suarez was said. She wanted to see them play baseball. Her mom tweeted out right after this happened that, of course, this happened because they're Reds fans. They went to a Reds game to watch him play. He was actually ejected from that game as well. So she'd been to two games, and he's gotten ejected from both. The Mariners end up catching wind of this. Jesse Winker sent them up a little uh, a little thing Uh, he signed something put a little note to go home with so not not all was lost for that little girl but producer ray i'm not sure if you saw that brawl but uh it, it was wild it was madness yeah it was pretty crazy and there were eight suspensions following the brawl like what do you think the locker room was like after the game you're right there there were eight suspensions handed down from this the ejections included angels manager phil nevin the pitcher, Andrew Wance, the closer, Rysel Iglesias, that threw the, the tray of seeds across the field, Ryan Tapera, and on the Mariner's side, Scott Service, the manager, Jesse Winker, who got hit and charged over to the other dugout, J.P. Crawford, and Julio Rodriguez. That's a lot of suspensions. There's a lot going on here. Um, I don't know how Anthony Rendon, well, I don't even know. Well, I don't even know if he could get ejected. I mean, he can. He's not. He's not playing for the rest of the year. But I'm assuming he could get ejected and throw and and thrown out of the game. I mean, you can throw fans out of the game. I'm sure you could throw Anthony Rendon out. But something hefty has to be coming down for Anthony Rendon. I can't imagine what Major League Baseball is going to be doing there because, 
Like I said, he is out for the year. He is not on the roster. He is he's not playing in games. He comes out of the dugout, throws a punch left-handed, which, by the way, is the second best thing he had done all year left-handed because the home run that he hit from the left side of the plate was by far the coolest. So, again, not condoning violence, but for him to come out of the dugout and throw a left-handed punch, are you kidding me? Something serious is coming down for her, for him. What do you do, suspend him at the beginning of next year? Do you just find him a hefty charge this year? Uh, I don't know, but scary scene there. Scary scene. A, a, a big a big brawl. A lot of suspensions come in. A lot of ejections happen. So that, that brawl on Sunday was a big deal. Thanks for watching. If you love flipping bats, swinging 3-0, or just talking ball, join us. Call us at 213-537-9339 with your questions. We have a weekly guest, and we have a lot of fun. So hit that subscribe button.